Hello everybody. Hi Mia. Right, today I'm going to show you my backup character that has been DM approved for if my current character, the D&D, dies and the dice that I have made for her. So I think we'll start with the dice. All of these dice I've made myself. So these are, I've made a video about these particular dice before. They are my Druid of the like Forest Moon dice. I have these kind of mossy glittery dice because this character is a Druid. I have these, what I call my Dark Academia dice. They're black with just an ever so slight hint of like a brass shimmer within them and you kind of have to see under a certain light and got brass numbering in them. And these dice where I have made little polymer clay donuts that and set it inside dice and I have used pink and orange to give a nod to Dunkin Donuts which isn't a thing in New Zealand but I know it's a thing in lots of other places so I use the pink and orange for the letter the numbering on these dice and the last set of dice because this character has a level in being a barbarian these murder dice if anything else so they've got these little skulls in them and then there's like a matte blood red numbering and it's got a slight uh, black smoke swirl and <laughs> and a little bit of red mica So this, or oh, this is the dice bag that I keep everything in. It's a little donut. This is a children's purse that I, purse that I got off Timu, which fits all of these dice for her in it. So this is Knit. Knit is a tiefling. So we're gonna flip through Knit's journal together. I always have a page inside my character journals of what the dice actually do because I am new to D&D and I'm still learning and I still am not 100% sure what all of the dice do but I have all of these tabs so this one is character stats and information so we have knit just one word um, she's a level she's a fifth level character with four levels in Druid and one in Barbarian She's a tiefling druid barbarian with a sage researcher background and her alignment is chaotic. Good. She hasn't been played but she is DM approved. All of her stats, her modifiers, you know, skills and proficiencies, passive perceptions, things like that. In what she, um, the languages she speaks. So she speaks five languages. She speaks common and infernal, and that comes from being a tiefling. She speaks abyssal and undercommon, which comes from being a sage researcher. And she also speaks druidic, and that comes from being a druid. So this is her backstory. So, Nit is the only daughter to tiefling parents Miles and Poke. They lived in a small village in the forest called Solma Frith. Nit has had a regular, loving, well adjusted, supported childhood. However, she's not necessarily naive and isn't really easily taken advantage of. 
She has always felt connected to her forest home and followed the Druid path early and as a teenager she got a job in a bakery where she learned to make and became thoroughly obsessed with donuts. She also developed the ability to talk to spirits around this time. So at the age of 20, as is tradition in her village, she left for adventure. She has been adventuring for about a year on her own and has picked up some barbarianistic traits and she has become fiercely more independent and more sure in herself and abilities. She was just always ready to stand up for her forest and her friends. Now by obsessed with donuts I mean she could be in the middle of a heated battle but if there is a donut shop nearby she's making a beeline for it. Now this is um, the character advancement how many XP points you need to level up because we play an XP based campaign and then a little note that says here how XP works so the pillar is fairly straightforward when an enemies are defeated and the players are victorious you add up the XP from the enemies and divide it evenly amongst the allies including NPCs and then a particular note is that to reward non-violent options for combat and so this is the what I gain at each level for a druid class advancement and what I gain for each level is a barbarian class advancement depending on what level up I take. So this is for party members. I have less spaces to write about each party member, uh, their you know name and all their stats and things. I've left quite a few spaces because you know people die people move on right this is my inventory so this is how much money she has her gold her platinum pieces her copper pieces and whatnot this is her personal inventory with a note of what is in one day of rations here how much it costs how much it weighs and container capacity so um, how much each container can hold, how big it is, things like that. And this is adventuring gear. I've written this down from the player's handbook, but it also can change, you know, depending on where we are in game or what the DM says, but a general guideline in the player's handbook. So this is a standard exchange rate, how the money system in D&D works and all of the things that you can purchase are like adventuring gear so you've got your you know, abacus, your acid file through to blankets, um, a bottle, a crossbow bolt, you know, hunting tracks, a grappling hook, a quiver, soap, a spell book, spikes, iron, spyglass, things like this. Then I have another one for weapons, purchasable items that are weapons, their name, their cost, how much they weigh, and the damage they do. And now we have magic items, spells, and cantrips. So she has no magic items currently, and she has no potions and scrolls at the moment either. But these are the current spells that she has prepared. I like to keep a physical journal. At the same time, we also use D&D Beyond, but if the app glitches or crashes, I have a written, you know, record of my character. Also, it's within my group, I seem to be the only person that takes notes. Not even our DM does, so at any given point, I'm almost exclusively the only person that knows what's going on and what's happened and who we've met. So this is a little note for myself about how concentration works in spellcasting and taking damage and things like that. So the cantrips she has prepared, so she has controlled flame, she has jeweled craft and she has shaped water. She also has thaumaturgy and Thunderclap. Now these little notes I've got 
a little sticky note that say prepare because I might move these around as she levels up or depending on her situation at the beginning of each day. The spell she currently has prepared is Charm Person. She has Detect Magic, Healing Word, Bark Skin, Find Traps, Flame Blade. Hellish Rebuke, Spider Climb. She has Animal Friendship, but it's not currently prepared. She has Darkness prepared. She has Heat Metal, Summon Beast. And I believe that's everything she has currently at the moment. This is my NPC Syndicate and Monster Log. So I will write down any organizations, cults, and signals syndicates that we come across you know when we meet them what they look like things like that something to keep a track of so we can go hey hang on we've met this person before we know who they're connected to and they're not good or they're very good to know who our allies are an NPC log so we can write down their name description and location the session we met them and so I have quite a lot of space for that and I have the same for monsters so our name description location session and a lot of space for monsters as well and now I just have some extra sheets and a space for session notes this particular journal is an A5 six ring binder journal which was a daily planner from Kmart but I didn't like the daily planner thing so it was it's, re it's a really cheap journal setup so I buy it just for the cover and then I give all of the insides or the guts of it to my children and they call it goose paper which is good on other side and they'll just use it for drawing and for doodling on but this is my tiefling Druid Barbarian backup character that is DM approved. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, leave a comment. Make sure you leave the comment, hi Mia, because I know she watches my videos. And I will see you next time.